Risha, you have raised taxes to the highest level in 70 years. That is not going to drive economic growth. You raised national insurance, even though people like me opposed it in Cabinet at the time. Back, but I'd love to stand here. I'd love to stand here and say, look, I'll cut this tax, that tax and another tax, and it will all be OK. But you know what? It won't. There's a cost to these things, the cost of higher inflation, higher mortgage rates, eroded savings. And you know what? This something for nothing economics isn't conservative, uh, it's uh, socialism. Under your plans, we are predicted to have a recession because you have raised tax, it is cutting back on growth, it is preventing companies from investing. Them. I think you have to accept that we are in an unprecedented situation. We are going to have to do more for people to help with the cost of living. Where we really need to concentrate is on growth. And under your tax trajectory, that is going to be much harder. You're generally proposing that we, we borrow to fund our day-to-day -day okay. spending, putting those bills on a credit card. Literally, oh. Jeremy Corbyn didn't think that that was the right okay, approach. Liz, so I was Chief Secretary to the Treasury negotiating these pay, pay and terms with the unions. I think it is very important that the government does stick to our guns because what we can't have is a wage price spiral. We know what happened in the 1970s when inflation got out of control. We have to get the best possible deal we can uh, in all aspects of helping our hard-working public sector workers. But what we can't have is these inflationary pay rises that lead to vast problems across the economy. The key to strikes on this question is to do with trust. If people trust the government and know that the government is on their side, then people are more willing to make, go that extra mile and to have that negotiation in good faith. And the absolute key to whoever we choose as Prime Minister is got to be somebody who people trust. That's why I'm arguing we need a clean start, because we need somebody who the pay negotiators know is actually on their side throughout all of this. Now, as somebody who's served years in the army, I can tell you, that unless you get commanders you trust, you never get the answer you need. Very well, it's very difficult because, of course, whatever your responsibility was in that government, whatever your place in that government was, Keir Starmer in two years' time is going to hold that record against us. And we need to make sure we're winning Conservative seats across the country. And even really good people lent credibility to the chaos. Can, can we uh, better not? I'm not uh, ashamed of anything we did uh, in government. We have a lot to be proud of. We got Brexit done, and what the Prime Minister did <clears> on Ukraine and on vaccines was fantastic. Serving in government is not easy. It requires taking difficult decisions. Tom has never done that. It's very easy for him to criticise what we've been doing. But we have been out there on the front line making the case for Sorry, why, Kimmy, I, I have why we have done line. the right I've been on the front line not in to, Afghanistan not in government, and Iraq. Not in government. And I've been on the front line of the argument against... Putin and against China. I've yeah. changed government policy on this. But you haven't taken any and decisions. These it's are easy decisions. to talk. Talking is easy. Yeah. Talking Julie, is easy. I, I have served as Foreign Secretary during the worst war perpetrated in Europe for decades. It was right for me to stay doing my job so we could continue to stand up to Vladimir Putin, we could continue to support Ukraine, and we could work with our international allies. We have led the free world on the response. I think it would have been completely irresponsible of me to leave my post so, at this vital time, not just for our country, but also for global security. Was it very I would just say to all four of my other colleagues and candidates here, I, I know why this is being done. But what I would say to you is that all attempts to paint me as an out-of-touch individual will fail. I'm the only person on this stage Penny, just that has truth. won and I'm fought just telling a Labour seat. I'm telling you My finish, constituents please. do not elect people who are out of touch. My question is for Dr. Rishi. Myself and other ministers raised the issue of COVID loan fraud and you dismissed us and it has cost taxpayers £17 billion. Why didn't you take us seriously? Well, that's... Absolutely not right. We've taken ta tackling fraud incredibly seriously and set up all the systems in place to go and recover money from fraudsters, oh, including new units, HMRC, giving new powers. And actually, billion. at this point, dozens of arrests have already happened and billions have been recovered. Well, Rishi, but it's important... Um, but it's important. One of, one of uh, your former ministers resigned on this issue. He is supporting my campaign not yours. Why is that? Yeah, well, Theo's uh, entitled to his own view. But actually, I'm, I'm proud of my record. And to take us back to that moment, we were on the precipice of over a million businesses going to the wall, millions of people losing their jobs. And this was not a question of weeks to get money out to them. It was a question of not even days. It was hours. And actually, we tried a system 
which went through an enormous amount of paperwork and bureaucracy, and it took two weeks, and it wasn't going to work. Okay. So I took the decision to design something okay. that made sure we supported over a million businesses. Right. And you know what? We, the latest uh, estimate since, 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 since Theo left, since Theo left, this is really important, Julie. Actually, since Theo left, the new estimates for what the fraud will be on the bounce back loan scheme have been reduced by a okay. third. All right. And the I'm payment performance on that loan I'm portfolio okay. is actually far surpassed anyone's it. expectations. Richie, you know, I, well, I think there's a couple of things that we need in order to win a next general election. One of them is me as the prime minister, because the polling shows that I'm the only one that can beat Keir Starmer and take the fight to Labour. That's I beat true. him so all over the country. That's, 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 that's simply not true. I'm polling best in Scotland with young people, true. red wall, blue wall seats. That's why uh, I am subject to a, a great deal of, uh, of focus from your no, Tony, supporters. I respect you deeply, but, the but, second, but that's not... That's the, not second, uh, the second thing we need...